Hello everybody, this is Monica Heltz with your daily Fisher's Health Department update. Um, so first I just wanted to let everybody know that on Friday we unveiled our community risk rating scale. So you can check that out on our website if you haven't already. Um, we've given you kind of four different community level indicators with some color coding attached and a little bit of an arrow to indicate what direction we're headed. It's featured kind of front and prominent on our website. Um, but if you want the full um, the full metrics that we used and the and the recommendations that come with each level, you can check it out under the COVID nineteen tab on the community risk rating level. If you want an even more full explanation and you and you missed it on Friday, um, there's a link on our website and it's in our social media. Um, it was posted on Friday. The presentation that we gave to the school board work session on Friday morning. So um, that's that was the purpose of that session was to go through this risk rating scale and the recommendations that are associated with it. So you can check that out. Um, other thing I wanted to cover um, was how we came up with those uh, metrics. Those were um, uh, based on recommendations from the CDC, the World Health Organization, the Harvard Global Health Institute. We also got some feedback from uh, public health experts, infectious disease experts, and pediatricians. Um, everyone seemed to feel that those uh, recommendations were in line with recommendations that have been given elsewhere. So um, I feel pretty confident that we're giving you a good set of, of metrics that are you know, grounded in, in a lot of um, good research. Um, so again, those are community risk ratings. Um, so those hopefully will help you plan um, your activities going forward, you know, maybe help you make some decisions if you are questioning whether you should you know, have a barbecue or, or whatever kind of activity you're planning. Um, then you can kind of use that to help you plan. Um, at least that's our hope anyway. Um, speaking to our rating level right now, I would say that we are kind of straddling the yellow and the orange. We have also updated our community dashboard to kind of reflect our two primary metrics, which have to do with our percent positivity and our case rates. So one of those metrics is in yellow right now, one is in orange. Percent positivity is at about 5.9% and our 14-day um, uh, rolling average on our case rate is a little bit over 13. So we're kind of straddling those two. We've got a lot of other factors going on, including our testing site delays. So I wanted to speak for a minute about that. Um, we are still seeing about a 10-day lag time in our results. We continue daily talks with our laboratory partner. We're also engaged in other talks about expanding the laboratory network and taking some other actions. Um, our laboratory partner continues to feel that they are um, making a lot of progress, even though they're facing this national shortage. They're using some new techniques and they have some new equipment coming on pretty soon that should help turn that around in the next two weeks. So um, I will keep you updated um, as much as I can. We also you know, are starting to see a little bit of an improvement in our testing time, but nothing that I can guarantee you as a solid improvement over the 10 days. Um, the other topic I wanted to just uh, briefly cover today was morbidity and mortality. So I get a lot of um, people writing to me about deaths and we're not having deaths right now, so we shouldn't be so concerned about this or we should, you know, kids are in a low risk group, so we should um, not be concerned about them. And, um, and all of these things I think are um, true from a death perspective. We haven't seen a lot of deaths lately in Fishers, which is great. That means our nursing homes have been taking the appropriate steps. Our at-risk individuals continue to be kind of hunkering down and taking some more caution. Um, so that's fantastic. I'm so glad about that. Um, but deaths are not the only consequence of disease. So I just want to talk a little bit about morbidity, and that would be more reflective of the longer-term consequences of living with a disease rather than just dying from a disease. So not all diseases cause death immediately. Some of them cause consequences along the way that could um, result in, in difficulty in your life or something like that. So with COVID, we really don't know what the long-term effects of the disease are because the disease has only been around for eight months. So we're still kind of trying to figure that out and finding that out. Those studies are just starting to emerge. Um, some of the studies that are emerging are not particularly um, uh, positive, I, I gotta say. Um, there are some concerning studies that there may be effects on the brain and there may be effects on the heart. Um, um, but again, those are preliminary studies. That's just the tip of the, of the research coming out. So all that to say, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to say that this is still a new disease. We're still learning about it. 
I think it still behooves us to be extremely cautious in our activities. Um, so I just want you to take that into consideration that we don't only think about deaths, we also think about the unknowns and the long-term possible effects of having a disease in our community that could possibly affect us for a while. So all of these are factors that go into play when we create a community risk rating scale. And, um, and I think it's also important to say that there really isn't a lot of activity out there that carries no risk. So we're not going to, we can't, by having a community risk rating scale, you'll notice that even in the green zone, which is the relatively low risk zone, we still are urging you to take a number of different steps to be cautious and to be careful so that we can still mitigate the spread of this virus and so that we can mitigate the number of people who may suffer consequences that we may not even know what those consequences are. So um, if, if the research changes significantly, then we will adjust accordingly. So that's, that's kind of how science works. So, um, I hope you'll check it out and, um, hope it's helpful to you as you kind of try to plan your activities going forward. I'll continue to keep you updated, updated. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.